Hi all, Andre Pavlicic here and welcome to week two of my course. Uh, first of all, before we get into it, thank you very much for um, all the feedback that I got. Um, it was absolutely phenomenal, the amount of feedback I got, so thank you for that. And without further ado, let's focus on week two, which is going to be about ways of learning and culture. Right, so here's the agenda. We have are going to go through the ways of learning. I'm going to talk about memory validation, I'm going to talk about Terraform practicalities, uh, the culture and the finding a body basically from it. Right, and there's a few ways to reach me. You can connect with me on LinkedIn, you can comment on YouTube and you can join the Discord server, uh, pop in and say hi. And of course, if you like my content, please give a like, hit, uh, hit, hit the subscribe button and hit that bell to make sure you receive all the notifications from the whenever I post a new video. Right, so first of all, before I I want to get into ways of learning. So first of all, I want to say, before you start learning, you really got to figure out what type of learner you are, because learning what type of learner you are can help you massively in what learning all the content that you want to really achieve. So there's really three types of learners. Uh, visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. So visual be respond better to reading books, reading the documentation, like for example from Microsoft, lots of docs there, the lots of um, reading material over there. You may also benefit from the visual cues from the uh, watching videos. Uh, Auditor again is that you will benefit from uh, watching videos, podcasts are a good thing, uh, b books uh, or like for example, sometimes, I'm, although I'm not an auditory person, I'm a more kinesthetic learning, but what I sometimes do is I, I sometimes go running and I take uh, and I put in an uh, audio book to learn uh, and that is a really great way to go about it as well. Um, kinesthetic is you basically you learn by doing so this is what I am really and the it's like I just go through all the content I first of all try and perform the action that's required and then it, it essentially will come to me about all the theory that's behind it so uh, yeah so that's basically the first bit I want to talk about uh, ways of learning Right, so um, the next one I'd like to also know is whether you're an introvert or extrovert. This kind of helps you in a way that uh, would you listen, for example, if you're watching a video, would you prefer to have headphones off or on? Uh, would you be able to m meet other people? Would you benefit from a one-to-one -one chat? Which, uh, to be honest, as introverts, we don't shy away from that one-to-one because -one, I'm an introvert myself, but we'll, we shy away us from large groups, like, you know, to try and help. But uh, I think that for me, any time it's over six people, I usually listen into the conversation more than actually contribute and to fully go ahead with it. It all depends on what what my role is, to be honest with you. But if I'm at a party, I drive a bit with my friends, with my close friends, rather than meeting out new people to each their own. But um, yeah, essentially, by knowing this, you can actually uh, explore what type of learning you actually should uh, maybe can help you in terms of how to actually fully learn and. To build on this, uh, you do have the Kersey. Um, there's a one where they introduce the artisan, guardian, idealist, and rational. So each one of those characteristics do have, um, uh, you know, a certain trait behind them. So you can actually figure out what type of student you are, uh, matching to your personality there. Uh, the other bit is it's kind of again going on the 16 personalities i'm not sure if you've heard but that that's um that can help you understand who you are and then that way you can actually learn a little bit better because you know who you are so therefore you can actually help 
understand your personality trait and that personality trait can help you learn your um, whatever it is you want to learn much better uh, for well I, I don't mind saying I'm uh, INTP I uh, a personality so that's I've taken like about four tests so far <laughs> of the personality traits and I've always hit on INTP so I'm pretty confident on that uh, but uh, it's not that it's not really set in stone or just because it says it but it can help you understand your char character in, in the world today so memory validation so what do I mean by memory validation when we grow up in society um, we are always taught that we got to uh, actually read learn memorize and for example pass an exam to be honest this does not work in the real world it, no matter what your profession is it really that, that's not how it works really it's about how you can get to the answer i mean i've now i've gotten uh lots i've learned a lot of things but to be honest as human beings yeah we kind of forget we we do like for example if i've written a terraform module and uh, a month later somebody a colleague of mine asked me about that terraform module i can't remember for the life of me about it I've made notes, I've made my comments, but when I go back into it, it's like, it will take me some time to try and remember, oh yeah, this is why I have did it this way. So, you know, it's just like, as human beings, we kind of forget, but we know what we need to actually solve the answer. So, uh, this is why I'm trying to bring up that, you know, that's why I think CAF Terraform is really important because it's a community which is always constantly being worked on. And that's why I really uh, want to push this along to many businesses to adopt this strategy because you actually take that open source model and you apply it. So if, for example, you don't remember something about it, the community can help rather than the random contractor uh, that may have been in a company for like a year or two and has built it, but then may be has left, uh, leaving the, the you know the other people to pick up the pieces or figure out why they've written it in such a way. Hence, that's why I think it's much better to go through this whole CAF Terraform and you uh, open source community, which is run by Microsoft. That's why I'm really honing in on that um and again from practicalities i just want to say as i say it's it's as simple or as complex as you want to make it you can write it up in all in one file but it's not best practice is it because then it's like people are just going to see this one file it's going to be it could be slow to execute you shouldn't really do that but it can be done by just getting the right balance so i've seen complex as well where you just over over complicated it instead of actually you know making it work for what's needed you add in so many logic into that that which is not really needed you can actually simplify it a bit more so that's what is you know that's why again calf terraform can help with that because they give that module that you basically use to deploy all your um infrastructure or or whatever you need basically and uh, they give you a good best practice model as well for that so that's why I am really pushing this and I can't wait for us to get started on it uh, culture so it's not a culture that you may be thinking of it's a culture where it's like I'm talking about team culture I'm not talking about pizzas or ping pong or beer um although i like all three don't get me wrong but <laughs> uh, for me it's like it's more about the ways of working with my colleagues um do we, how how is it best if i'm working on a project how do i let other people know what i've worked on how do i actually speak with my colleagues if for example i have a problem this is a type of culture which i'm talking about that 
openness uh, knowing when you can like when, when you don't know something you know it's like you you speak with your colleagues saying hey i'm not sure about this one or sometimes you just need somebody to watch you you can have no idea how many times i've actually asked for um help for a particular subject which i just figured out because basically i just had someone else in that room with me just having a watch and then i'm like oh okay this is it and <laughs> that that's that's basically what the which is it's embracing the unknown it's asking for help and of course um it's okay to say i don't know because in azure it's impossible to know everything if you say to me you know azure fully off by heart and everything like that I'm going to call you a lie because it's impossible. You, and you may learn some things in Azure, but then you might forget it because as you delve into other projects. You, you'll pick it up again quickly, but it's uh, if you're not constantly working on it, you sometimes could forget. It has happened to me, and I've picked up a few bits where I've done it, but I haven't done it for a year, and then I tried to start it up again, and then it worked, so... Yeah, that, that's what um, I'm talking about in terms of culture. Okay, so that leads me to the next one, which point, which is the remote pair programming. Now, for me, I think this is definitely one of the better ways I find working because remote pair programming has so many benefits. Uh, for, so why should companies, for example, pair program? There's so much about it that I really think it, does bring about uh, let me try okay so um, let's now talk about remote pair programming so why should companies pair programming there's a lot of benefits it's better outputs high availability knowledge retention so first of all before that what is remote pair programming let's try. okay remote pair programming what is it a remote pair program is when you actually uh, have two individuals and they may be sharing a screen uh, and they will be sh remote screen on a call and just working on a implementation via code together. Now, I find this approach really works. Uh, each to their own. For me, I really like when I'm working with somebody, I'm on a call and I'm working with them uh, and we just have, seem to have better work ethic. It's not really boring. You're not, you know, you're not putting in, in your, all your time into like code. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's, you like writing code, but sometimes if you do it too much by yourself, it can get quite repetitive and quite boring. Uh, but when you do it with others, it's great because uh, other people can see ideas. You can share uh, different ideas as well. It's great for like knowledge retention because you basically put everything together. And you know, if one of you guys, for some, whatever reason, leaves, then the other guy kind of at least has worked on it. And then, you know, it's like, I think the outputs definitely can outweigh the costs, you know, because you're basically going to have two people working on the same project, right? But if you manage it properly, the, the output, you get the job done quicker. You will get then the customer's return a lot quicker as well. So that's why if you manage it properly, it can definitely have a benefit. And... Again, it can work best if, for example, one person came from the ops world and one came from the dev world. So, it, and they both work together as DevOps, as they may have different ideas. So, for example, the person from ops world will know a lot more about the system design, but they, they will obviously be capable of writing code themselves, but uh, they can help in terms of high availability and reliability and all of that kind of stuff and advise a little bit better. While with um, a person that has come from the devil, they might be able to know uh, the code a little bit better, how to structure it, um, you know, and each one will keep each other on the level playing field to produce the best project they can actually produce. So that's why I really think remote pair programming for me uh, anyway it seems to work I, 
everybody's different, but um, yeah, I think this this is definitely is a more uh, better way. I mean, I remember when I did uh, pair programming, like in an office. Trust me, there's nothing more boring than watching a guy on a screen type type something and you be the observer. That is the most boring thing in the world. <laughs> But what, uh, when you're like on a remote pair programming session, you can do, you can maybe do other stuff if needed. You are there, but you're also, you're observing the code, but you don't have to always get into that zone of watching the code. So that's why I think remote pair programming definitely can work as long as you guys can uh, manage it basically properly. So my next point and my final point is to actually find a buddy. Now, given all that I've given in the past about remote pair programming and ways of learning, actually teaming up with somebody is a really great help to your learning. Um, so I would suggest like find a project, for example, solve my project next week, but you can also work on other projects as well and just work with that person to find out about their experience and just get on a call and trust me, it's, it's a lot more fun learning when you, there's two people uh, achieving the same goal. Uh, so, you know, find uh, some sort of project to create and work on it and it's it's going to be a much better opportunity for you rather than just w working s siloed because let me tell you, you're not alone. There's, we're in the cloud, we're always learning. It's an always learning culture. So you, you know, it's might as well pick up a, a friend who actually can help you with that as well. And uh, you can share your ideas. Uh, you know, you can code together. Uh, I, I'm open for some help as well if you guys want to team up with me uh let me know and if you want to go through the course as well if you can't seem to find anyone let me know i'm i'm happy to help uh n not sure i can you know dedicate all my time to everybody but uh, uh speak with me and we'll see what we can do really and that's it i uh, hope you enjoyed this portion next week we're actually gonna be doing the real hands-on stuff so i'm excited about that so again as i say contact me on LinkedIn, uh, like and hit that bell on youtube and i will see you on the next one